Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video I'm going to go over the nomenclature of alkenes and cycloalkenes and I will also show you the most common traps that I often see on the exams and how to avoid those mistakes. So first of all, what exactly are alkenes? Alkenes are compounds that contain a double bond, a pi bond like that. And when it comes to alkenes, we are going to distinguish between the open chain alkenes, or in other words, acyclic molecules, and cyclic alkenes, which in nomenclature terms we are going to refer to as cycloalkenes. From the perspective of priorities, the double bond gets the priority over simple R groups and halogens if you have any in your molecule. So whenever you are numbering your molecule, you will have to prioritize giving the lowest possible numbers to the alkene, to the CC double bond, rather than to other groups that might be sitting on your parent molecule. So let's jump right into it with an example. The first rule in any kind of nomenclature is to find the longest continuous chain containing the maximum number of your functional groups. In this particular case it's going to be pretty straightforward, I have my longest continuous chain right over here. Then we need to number our chain, and as I've mentioned whenever we are numbering our chain we gotta give the priority to the double bond rather than other substituents. So in this particular case I would have to start numbering from the left, so this is going to be my carbon number 1, carbon number 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 like that. If I were to number it from the other side, yes my bromine and chlorine would get lower numbers, but that would give a much higher number to my double bond, which would be a violation of the IUPAC rules for compounds like that. Next, like for any other name, we would have to alphabetize our substituents. Here I have the chlorine, which obviously starts with the C, and I also have bromine, which obviously starts from the B. So in my name, I would have to put bromine before chlorine, even though bromine has a higher locant, higher number. So that means that my name would have to start with 6-bromo, then I would have to call out my chlorine substituent, which is going to be 5-chloro, and after that we have our parent. Our parent chain has six carbons here, which means that the parent itself is going to start with the hex. However, I am not going to just say in, because I need to specify where exactly my double bond is located. And in this particular case, my double bond starts from carbon number one, so I'm going to say that this is hex one, and then I'm going to say in, which is the ending for the double bond. Remember that now we cannot just say in, we always need to specify where the double bond is, and we are always going to say the first carbon where the double bond begins, not the second one, it's always the first carbon. Well, how about this example? So step number one, I again need to find the longest continuous chain containing as many double bonds as possible. In this case, it's got to be a chain right over here, not the horizontal one, but I would have to go around to the other double bond to make sure that I include both of my double bonds in the count. Then I need to number my molecule in such a way as to give the lowest possible numbers to my double bonds. The lowest possible number is going to be if I start counting from over here, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Because if I started counting from the opposite end, that would be 1, 2, 3, and my double bond would have ended up with the number 3 rather than with the number 1 as the lowest number, and that would be incorrect. Next, I will pay attention to my groups that I have hanging off my principal chain. I have the chlorine atom, so that is a chloro group. Then I have a two carbon chain, which is going to be the ethyl group. And then I have one carbon over here, which is going to be a methyl group. By alphabetizing those groups, I would remember that C goes before E in the alphabet, so I would have to start my name with the chlorine, then it will be the ethyl group, and then will be methyl group which means that for my substituents I will end up with 5-chloro, 3-ethyl, 6-methyl, 
and then the parent name. So in my parent, I have seven corbons, which means that the root for that parent is going to be hept. Then I'm going to say where exactly my double bonds are. Since I have two double bonds, it's going to be heptadiene. So I need to add letter A over here for the better sound of a name, so to speak. Then my double bonds are located at the position number one, and at the position number four. Remember, I number by where the double bond begins. So my double bond begins at the carbon number one, and the other double bonds begins at the carbon number four. And since I have two double bonds in this case, I'm going to finish my name saying that I have two di and add the ending in. So it is going to be 5 chloro, 3 ethyl, 6 methyl, hepto, 1, 4 diene. Here is another fun example. Take a few moments to work through this molecule on your own, and once you think you got it, check it with me. So step number one, finding the longest continuous chain containing the maximum number of double bonds. In this case, that is going to be this chain over here. So that is my parent. Step number two, I have to number it in such a way as to give the lowest possible numbers to my double bonds, which means that it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that is going to be an octadiene of some sort. Then I have my substituents. So I have the propyl group over here, I've got the methyl group, I have the chlorine, and I have another methyl group on the carbon number 2. Alphabetizing all of my substituents, I would have to start with the chlorine, which means that my name will begin with 3-chloro, then in the positions 2 and 5, I have two methyl groups, so I'm going to say dimethyl, like that. Then, at the position number six, I have the propyl group. And then, finally, my parent, which is going to be octa, one, six, di, in, and I barely have enough space to squeeze it in there. So remember, your instructor will try to trick you by twisting the molecule in space in all different ways and directions, but whenever you are looking for your longest continuous chain, remember that your longest continuous chain must contain your double bond, or all of the double bonds if possible, and if that longest continuous chain ends up being a little bit shorter than the maximally possible longest continuous chain that you are going to be able to find for some sort of a molecule, then that's what you're going to go with. And I have to make a one small disclaimer here. While there have been certain changes to the IOPAC nomenclature in 2013, most textbooks didn't get the memo, so to speak, which means that most instructors and most textbooks are still teaching slightly outdated IUPAC rules, and within the scope of this video, I'm going to be sticking to those rules, what you are going to find in the absolute majority of your textbooks, and what you are most likely going to be tested on. There are a couple of small differences, but they are not that significant. And I'm willing to bet that your instructor will let you know that what they are teaching you is slightly different from what you have in your textbook. So that is okay, that can happen, just so you know. All right, so the these molecules were all open chain, all acyclic molecules. So how are we going to deal when we have a cycloalkene? Well, frankly, we are going to deal with them in a very similar way. We will first find the longest continuous chain, in this case it's going to be the longest continuous cycle containing our double bond. Here it's going to be a cycle right over here, so I have a six-membered ring as my parent. Next. I need to number my chain. And since cycles neither have the beginning nor do they have the end, we are going to number it in such a way as to give the lowest possible number to an alkene, of course, which means that we have to start from an alkene. But here is something very important. Whenever you are numbering your chain, you always have to number through the alkene. Never start from one carbon of an alkene and then go in the opposite direction. So what I mean here is that we can number it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, or I can number it in the opposite direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 
However, I cannot do something like that where I, let's say, start here and then go over there. This you cannot do. One other thing that I want to point out here, just like with the nomenclature of any other compounds, we always want to opt for a way that gives the lowest possible numbers to our substituents in addition to our major functional group, of course. So in this case, I can see that my green numbering method gives number three for the ethyl group, while my red numbering way gives number six to my ethyl group, which means that I will have to choose the green numbering system rather than the red one. And to make sure that I am not cluttering my picture too much, I'm just going to get rid of those numbers. All right, so next I need to alphabetize my substituents. Well, in this particular case, I only have one substituent, so there isn't much to alphabetize. That is just the ethyl group, which means that my name here is going to be 3-ethyl-cyclohexene. And notice that I am not putting the number one before my in, because in the case where I only have one double bond in my cyclic compound, the numbering will always start from that carbon, from that double bond, which means that putting one in is going to be redundant. And IUPAC says that whenever you have redundancy, well, you get rid of that. We don't need to show that. If, however, you have multiple double bonds, then you will absolutely have to specify where exactly your double bonds are. So let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Here in this molecule, I again have the longest continuous chain slash cycle being my six-membered ring. Next, I need to number this cycle in such a way as to give the lowest possible numbers to my double bond, which will have to be number one, and the rest of my substituents. The best way in this particular case is going to be if I number it like this, three, four, five, and six, going to go counterclockwise again. Then, alphabetizing my substituents, I have the chlorine, I have the ethyl group, and then I have two methyl groups, one methyl group at a carbon number five, and another methyl group at a carbon number three, which means that in my name, I'm going to start with the chlorine because it is first in the alphabet, giving me one chloro, three ethyl, then at the positions three and five, I have two methyl groups, which means that I would have to say dimethyl, and again, my parent in this case is going to be cyclohexene. And again, I do not have to specify where exactly my double bond is because it will be at the carbon number one because there is only one double bond. So I end up with one chloro, three ethyl, three five dimethyl, cyclohexene. Well, if I do have multiple double bonds in my molecule, then the rules are still essentially the same. I will have to find the longest continuous chain, which in this case going to be this 10 carbon ring, so my parent is going to be cyclodeca, and since I have two double bonds, it's going to be a diene, so it's going to be some sort of cyclodeca diene. Then I will have to number my molecule starting from one of my double bonds, and I will have to number it in such a way as to give the lowest possible numbers to my substituents. Here, that means that I will have to number from this point, go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. This numbering will give me the lowest possible numbers to my methyl groups and to my bromine as well. So alphabetizing my substituents, I have the bromine atom and I have two methyl groups at the position number three. So I will start my name by saying that at the seventh position, I have bromine. So it's going to be seven bromo. Then at the position three, and again at the position three, I have two methyl groups. So I'm going to say dimethyl. And of course, my parent is going to be cyclodeca. But since now I have two double bonds, I will have to specify that my double bonds are at the position one and position number four, after which point I'm going to say that I have two double bonds. So it's going to be di in like this. So I get 
7 Bromo, 3 3 Dimethyl, Cyclohexa, 1 4 Diene. So, as you can see, the nomenclature of alkenes is pretty much the same as nomenclature of alkanes or cycloalkenes, with just one more layer of complexity where we need to pay attention to where exactly our double bond is and make sure that we give the lowest possible number to a double bond before we look at our substituents. And of course, since the double bond does not have any free rotation around itself, we cannot simply twist the substituents on a double bond, because of that we can have different stereoisomers around the double bond, which we typically going to describe as E or Z stereoisomers. And to make sure that you know how to give E and Z stereo descriptors to your molecules, watch this video next.